Hey guys, um, Bible lesson for 12.1. And this is lesson 14.2, God incarnate. And our focus today is Jesus the empathizer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with prayer. I know Sarah had a prayer request. I hadn't received any other prayer requests from anybody when I made this video. So if you have any other ones, or if it's just something you want me to pray for, um, just make sure you let me know that so I don't announce it on a video. But if it's just something that you want me to pray for, I'm happy to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I know that Sarah wanted, um, wanted us to pray for her Nana. Just pray that she continues to get better. She was able to spend Thanksgiving with her, make pies with her, so she was very excited about that. And then also, um, her dog just had to have surgery. So I know he had been really sick. So we wanna pray for for those two situations. And if there's anything else um, that you guys want me to mention tomorrow, I'll be happy to do that. Um, so that would be for Wednesday's lesson. I'd be happy to do that, something you want us all to pray for. And um, again, just let me know one way or the other, just so that I know if it's something you just want me to pray for, if it's something you want the whole class to. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started today. So heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, I thank you again, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to dig deeper in your word, Lord, to learn more about you. Father, I thank you so much for your blessings on our lives. Jesus, I thank you for your blood. I thank you for that sacrifice. Um, for our sins, for a debt that we couldn't pay, God. I ask that today, I ask the Holy Spirit to give me, to anoint me, Lord, to teach, to anoint me to teach this word uh, and, to, and to help us, Lord, open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today. And Jesus, precious, oh, and I continue to plead the precious blood of Jesus over all of us, all of our families, um, everyone across the school, our churches, everywhere. Lord, I pray that you'll just protect us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, so as we get started this morning, again, the title of our lesson, we're still continuing in the series, God Incarnate, but today's focus is Jesus the Empathizer. And we're going to talk about what that word means in just a minute. So... I'm going to read to you an old adage. I'm going to see what you guys think about it. Never judge a person unless you have walked a mile in his shoes, his or her shoes. So never judge a person unless you have walked a mile in their shoes. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that or not. It's kind of an old adage and people maybe phrase it a little differently in different places. But... Basically, it means that people need to be careful about judging others. And I, I want to say this here, guys, when it talks about judging. We use that term very loosely, like, don't judge me, don't judge me. Okay, by your fruits, you shall know them. So, in saying that, I don't know that it's our place unless God specifically directs us to go talk to someone who is having a struggle morally in some way and God has sent you to go talk to that person, not blast them, not not that type of thing. But I have been in situations where I've had to go and it wasn't comfortable, but I knew there was a situation and I kept feeling God prompt me in prayer to go talk to this person and try to see if I could help them. Okay, and sometimes that means taking, talking to them privately. Sometimes it meant having, you know, a witness there and talking to someone, that type of thing. Um, but I'm... So I'm not talking about that. That's not judging someone that's seeing that there's a problem and trying to help. Um, and then there's people who are like, well, you're just judging me. You're just judging me. Our society really is really, really, really super bad about that. Um, you know, if you kind of call somebody out to a certain degree. And again, I'm not talking about going in and just being rude and ugly and mean to somebody. I'm talking about functioning in the anointing and under the power of the Holy Spirit to go and say something in a situation if you know that something is wrong. I've had to do that before. Also not a comfortable situation, but I knew it was the right right thing to do at that time. So, um, but like I said, our society is really bad about that. Well, you're just judging me. Well, no, you know, I'm just going to speak the truth and it may not even be directed to that person. Usually that means there's some type of sin and they're convicted and they don't like it. Um, but anyway, so it says it means that we need to be careful about forming opinions. I'll say it like that. It says judging other people, forming opinions of other people 
when we haven't walked in their circumstances, when we haven't gone through that, okay? I have definitely been guilty of doing that, not understanding a person's situation. And then once I did, I felt really bad about having those thoughts, having those feelings, things like that. Um, I have made comments here or there, especially when I was younger, you know, just not thinking, saying something, and then realizing later that, you know, I hadn't been through that situation. I didn't understand what that person was going through at the time. It might be some type of loss in their life. Um, you know, sometimes we don't realize that it's not easy just to pick up and move on and, and that type of thing. So having compassion for someone else in a situation that we may not understand. Um, and then we're going to talk about what empathy means. Empathy and compassion are actually different. And we're going to talk about that. Um, the adage, this adage relates to, how does this adage, could this adage relate to God incarnate? Because we talked about Jesus living in a physical human body. So he would have experienced a lot of the things that we experience. okay? There was actually very little that Jesus didn't experience um, in his human form that we do. And we'll talk about the things that he didn't experience and why in a minute. Now, the word empathize, remember I said sympathize or to have compassion on someone. Having sympathy for someone is, uh, it is really more like having compassion for someone, seeing their difficult situation, caring for them, uh, maybe trying to come alongside them and support them. But to empathize with someone means to share in someone's feelings, suffering, or grief. I talked to you guys earlier this year that I've lost both my parents. Um, we have a gentleman, a young man in our church. He's younger than I am, but he was probably, actually, he's at the age now that I was when I lost my dad. Okay, he had already lost his mom. I'd already lost my mom, and then I lost my dad. And this young man is in the same situation, and he lost his dad at about the same age that I lost my dad. I lost my mom very young, um, at 19, and then at 25, my dad passed away. And this guy is kind of in the same circumstance. So I can empathize with him. I know how it feels. I've walked in that place. So I understand that. Um, and from the standpoint, that is empathy. Being able to share in someone's feelings, suffering, or grief. Okay? Going through the same thing that they've been through. Now, think of a time when... Think of a time when you may have been ridiculed, okay, made fun of, ridiculed means made fun of, hurt, or gotten angry about something. Think about that. Now, imagine Jesus sitting in the classroom with you. All right, if he were in fourth grade with you, might he have also felt ridiculed, okay, made fun of, hurt, or angry? Do you think that could have ever happened to Jesus? The answer to that is yes, it could have, more than likely it did. And Jesus, think about this, if Jesus were perfect, he's the son of God. Now, people, most people didn't, you know, know that, or even if they, they wouldn't have believed him anyway. Okay, they, Jesus would have been the goody two-shoes. He would have been the one that always did what he was told. He was always obedient. Um, even when he didn't like a situation, he would have always been obedient. So he probably was made fun, fun of just because of that. Just that alone. All right. So Jesus would have experienced those same feelings. He would have been, he could have been hurt physically, emotionally. All right. How does it feel to know that Jesus has gone through the same feelings that you go through? How does that make you feel? I, ca I can't speak for you guys, but I know for me, it makes me, makes me realize that just how much God really loves me, that he would want to experience those things and know exactly how I would feel. All right. So it, it makes me feel pretty special. All right. Our God is the only real God. I mean, think about it as you've learned, we learn in history and things like that about these other gods. First of all, they're not real. But in, in, in all of these other gods, we you're never going to read a story about those gods coming down and having empathy, okay, even sympathy. Most of the gods that you'll read about in other cultures are very selfish. And again, like I said, they're not real anyway. Um, but they're very selfish. They have characteristics of a human being. God, Jesus came down and lived in an earthly body. 
for a purpose and for a reason. But he would have had that empathy for us to know when I'm hurt, when I lost my parents, when this young man lost his parents, he knows how we feel. He knows and he cares. Matter of fact, that's a song I absolutely love and it's called He Knows He Cares. Okay, God's right there. All right, he sees our heart, all the hidden broken parts. It's one of my absolute favorite songs because it, it does, it touches my heart and it helps me realize he knows what that feels like. He knows what a broken heart feels like. Okay, when we've lost something or someone very close to us. Now, Jesus, here's the difference though. Jesus would have been tempted, okay, or experienced that temptation or that invitation to sin, to do wrong, but Jesus never sinned. Okay, he would have been tempted, as we're all tempted, but we can make a choice as to whether or not we're going to act on that temptation and sin or not. Jesus never did sin. Tempted to, but never did. So he would not have ever felt jealousy or hatred, just a couple instances, towards another person. All right? He would have never intentionally lashed out in anger to hurt someone. He would not have been jealous or coveted some someone or something that someone had. All right? He would have never done that because that would have been sin. Now, Jesus may have been angry at times, but there's a difference in righteous anger and then unrighteous anger. The situation I give you an example of when Jesus went into the temple. This was as a grown man and he had started his ministry and he went into the temple and they were buying and selling in the temple and there are all these things going on that were completely against God's word and what God wanted going on in his house. The temple was, was the house of God. And Jesus went in and he turned tables over, flipped them over, chased them out of the temple. So, um, Jesus wasn't, he wasn't going in with, he was going in in righteous anger, okay, righteous indignation, and letting people know, hey, this isn't right. He was standing up for what was right and letting them know, this is sin, this is wrong, and it's not going to happen in my father's house, okay? That's the difference, just like what we were talking about judging others. There's a difference in standing up for what's right and people making fun of you for it. Because that will happen. I know it happens. It hurts. Because many times it happens with people that you know and that you care about. Um, but standing up for what's right, even when it's not popular. That was not popular. That was absolutely not popular. That he went in there and he told them, this isn't happening. You need to get out. Get this stuff out of God's house. Okay? So, that's the difference. Now, uh... I think I skipped something. Okay. No, I didn't. So he would have never experienced those sinful feelings. In Hebrews 14, yeah, Hebrews 4, excuse me, Hebrews 4, verse 15 and 16. So I'm going to read that. And I do need to remember to go over our memory verse too. So Hebrews 4, verses 15 and 16. If you're going to follow along with me, you can. Um, 15 and 16. All right, there we go. And I'm actually going to read verse 14 as well, because I think it's kind of, it goes along with what we're talking about. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession, our profession. Okay. Not profession like as in a job. Okay. Our profession, what we believe, what we say, what we express, um, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. What I just talked about. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Okay, as those scriptures are actually very well known. Now, the high priest in verse 15 is Jesus. If you didn't catch that, it's Jesus. Okay, in verse 15. As God incarnate, Jesus submitted to the limitations of his human body and had the same feelings and emotions that people have. For this reason, he can empathize. He knows what it feels like with people and can help them in their times of weakness. Okay. Have you ever been tired? Are you walking a long distance? maybe playing outside for a long period of time and you are worn out okay you're tired you're thirsty you need a drink of water okay 
in John 4. This is John. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 4, and verse 6. John chapter 4 and verse 6. Here we go. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the wall, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, the important thing in that was that it said Jesus was wearied, and he was actually stopping at a well. So what do you think Jesus had more in mind there? He actually had an appointment with a lady who didn't know she had an appointment with the Savior that day. But he stopped at a well, there was someone he needed to see there, okay? And he knew this person would be at this well at this time. So God, there, there's there's no happen chance with God. There's no accidents, okay? He had a divine appointment with that woman that, that you would read about, the Samaritan woman at the well that day. But in his physical body, he was tired. He was worn out and he was thirsty. Okay, so he would have needed a physical drink of water and to physically rest. Because we talked about the fact that he was fully God and fully man. We talked about that yesterday. Okay, so he was tired. Jesus was God, but he, but because he chose to be selfless and become a man, he was living in a human body. So when he traveled a long distance, he felt the same way humans feel when they travel a long distance. He felt tired. And again, he felt thirsty so there again he's at the well because he needs a drink of water and he needs to rest all right there was more than that purpose there but he needed that now this lesson was short it's simple but god jesus empathizes with us jesus empathizes he knows those feelings that we have sadness okay he knows what it feels like to be physically tired, to be thirsty. Okay, something that I've personally experienced um, for me. Uh, getting up early in the morning is the best time for me to pray and to study and things like that because it's quiet in my house. All right. And so as you guys will experience during some of our lessons this week with my girls and, you know, some of the things like that, you know, it's, it's not it's not easy to focus and to study when there's too much commotion. So that's the quiet time. But also when I'm physically tired, my spirit is willing, but my body sometimes doesn't want to cooperate. All right. Jesus would have experienced that as well. Physical tiredness in the body need to rest. So God Jesus, Jesus, would have experienced those same things. I'm going to send you guys some questions that I want you to answer about our lesson today. Take your time. If you need to go back and re-listen to the lesson, I would. And I want to review with you guys John 1.1, 1, 1, which our memory verse for this week. Be sure you're practicing it. It's a very simple verse, but make sure you practice it. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's your memory verse. It's talking about Jesus, the Word, Logos, what we talked about yesterday. The Word. Jesus is the Word, the living. The Bible is the living Word of God, guys. I told you, every time I study, every time I go back to and I read, God always shows me something new. Because it's living, it's breathing. Okay. I also want to read again John verse John chapter one and verse fourteen as well. Even though that's not one that you're memorizing, you can if you want to. I'd encourage you to. But John one and one is the one that you need to memorize. Fourteen. But I'm going to read fourteen again. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay. So as we close out in prayer this morning, I want you guys to think about that. Memorize that, that verse. Hide God's word in your heart. I told you before, sometimes there's scripture that I know and I know well, and sometimes I cannot recall its address, as I like to call it, so where it's found. But I know that word. I know that word. And it's seen me through so many things, guys. And I continue to learn so much about the one who redeemed me, the one who saved me, the one who paid the wages for my sin, what I couldn't pay. So let's pray, and I will see you guys a little later for math. All right, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you again, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you can empathize with us. I thank you that Jesus came and felt and, and dwelt in a human body that he could empathize with us and know how we feel and and help us, Lord, in every situation, Lord, that, we're, that we'll face. Father God, he knows heartache. He knows pain, God. Lord, I love you and I thank you. If there's any student, Lord, under the sound of my voice now that does not know you, as their personal Savior, I ask you today, Father, to touch their hearts, prick their hearts. I pray that they would come to that saving knowledge of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, Lord, that, that they would accept him as their Savior and realize that he shed his blood for them, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, your word is true, and Lord, all they have to do is talk to you like a friend, ask you for forgiveness of their sins and accept Jesus and their life can be completely changed. Lord, I ask that today, Father God. I ask that you would just move in, in this group of students today and across our, our schools and our churches, God, across this nation, Father. Lord, I pray that revival come to this nation, Father. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray, amen. All right, guys, I'll see you again soon.